everybody knows that the uh, that the people of Israel, the political class of Israel, the citizens of Israel, are big fans of the Mad Max franchise, and they're doing everything they can to bring on the foretold uh, apocalypse seen in that film and the world that comes after. They figure they're already desert dwellers; they're ahead of the game. Um, so, uh, Israel, according to Iran, uh, bombed its embassy in Syria killing a top commander. Iran's consulate in the Syrian capital, Damascus, was flattened on Monday in what Syrian and Iranian media described as an Israeli airstrike, a startling apparent escalation of the conflict in the Middle East that would pit Israel against Iran and its allies. A Lebanese security source speaking to Reuters said one of the dead was Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a senior commander in Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps. Iranian state television said several Iranian diplomats had been killed. Israel, which has repeatedly hit Iranian targets during the six-month war in Gaza, declined to comment on the incident following its usual practice, otherwise known as go get your fucking shine box. Iran's Taznim news agency said five people were killed in the Israeli strike. Syria's Sana State News Agency reported an unspecified number of deaths and injuries. Um, Iran's Tasnim News Agency said five people were killed in the Israeli strike. Oh, I see. Since the Iranian-backed Palestinian faction, Hamas's attack on Israel on October 7th, Israel has ramped up airstrikes in Syria against Lebanon's Iranian-backed Hezbollah militia and Iran's guards both of which support the government of President Bashar al-Assad. Um, so uh, this is from uh, Poster Firas. Iranian consulate in Damascus was bombed by Israel, assassinating senior commander Mohammad Reza Zahedi. There are unconfirmed reports of three Iranian generals killed. Now who's the terrorist here? Who's goading a full-blown war in the Middle East? Do you condemn Hamas, Keaton? Of course, yeah. We condemn Hamas. Uh, but let's look at this footage. I mean, now that I see it, it's not so bad. You put in a sofa, love seat. Uh, clear that right out. Uh, breaking Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in Damascus in broad daylight. This is a severe breach of the Vienna Convention and a violation of Syria and Iran's sovereignty. Israel wants to engulf the entire region in war, death, and destruction with Western weapons and support. You know, seems to be a lot of that going around. You remember how Ukraine tried to convince everybody that Russia had intentionally bombed Poland? Um, yes. You know, all of these proxy states um, are very eager to draw the United States into their regional wars. Uh, Even a Poland is in the opposite direction, right? Yes. Like they had Wiley Coyote by like firing the, the rockets. Oh, well, yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking of classic cartoons, Zelensky was out there like uh, like Bullwinkle with his uh, Boris routine. Yes, you see what we have been warning you of all of this time. These people are psychos, man. Like they, they don't, they don't care about starting World War Three, uh, as long as they can draw in the United States. So, uh, so is this a violation of international law? I mean, who's counting? Uh, the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. The premises of a diplomatic mission, diplomatic premises, are the houses of ambassadors and are inviolable and must not be entered by the host country except by permission of the head of the mission. Likewise, the host country must never search the premises, may not seize its documents or property, and must protect the mission from intrusion or damage. Article 30 extends this provision to the private residence of the diplomats. Uh, so this is uh, George Galloway. It is not only Iran who will undoubtedly respond to what just happened to Damascus, but Russia, too, cannot continue to allow such savage violations of the sovereignty of its 50-year ally, Syria. Keep an eye on the Golan Heights. 
Uh, and this is Kavork Almasian. Uh, Israel targeted the Iranian consulate. This marks a significant escalation by Israel towards Iran, specifically targeting the axis of resistance. The strikes targeted a high-ranking IRGC officer who plays a crucial role in Iran's operations in Syria. Moreover, the attack specifically aimed at the Iranian consulate, which holds the status of a sovereign Iranian territory. Consequently, Israel's strike can be interpreted as a direct attack on Iran rather than targeting targets that are Iranian-linked or Iranian-affiliated, as the U.S. and Israel have previously concealed using such terms. So, what does Israel want? Israel seeks to intensify and expand the scale of the conflict in order to compel direct involvement from the United States. American people need to understand the seriousness of the situation. Israel is actively attempting to involve their nation in another costly and dangerous conflict in the Middle East. How will Iran retaliate? It is not easy to provide an answer to this question, as Iran operates based on strategic decisions rather than emotions. Tehran aims to manage the tense situation in the region as the axis of resistance continues to make slow but effective progress against the U.S.-Israeli influence in West Asia. Uh, so what are your thoughts, Keaton? Well, this is just more evidence, even more evidence, that all of these disputes between Biden and Netanyahu, quote-unquote, of these past couple of weeks have just been for show. Because what this tells me is that Israel is fully confident that we have their back no matter what. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing this. Right. Like, if, if the last couple of weeks of tension were actual for real tension, uh, then they might think twice before doing a thing like this, right? right. If they think we're going to start conditioning aid, Right. Uh, if they think we're actually going to bring Netanyahu here and give him the quote unquote come to Jesus moment that Biden talked about, then they might not be doing this. The fact that they're doing this is just more evidence that there really is not much actual rift there, um, as evidenced earlier uh, this week or rather over the weekend where it came out that we've been sending them 2000 pound bombs this whole time, uh, even as we say things are getting out of hand. And so this tells me that Israel is as confident as ever, uh, which shows you that all of these um, uh, all of these rhetorical shifts are just that they are just surface level rhetorical shifts to try and win back some of the base that has left them uh, over this issue. Uh, because if there were any teeth to back any of that up, it's far less likely that Israel would be doing this. Not to say they wouldn't. They've got a lot of chutzpah, as they say. Uh, but uh, they'd be much less likely to. Uh, yeah, I think when you look at a situation like this, um, as many people have pointed out, World War I and World War II didn't uh, erupt overnight. There, there were a series of events leading into them, particularly with World War II. There were a series of smaller battles and incursions that finally erupted into World War II. All it's going to take is for Russia and Iran and perhaps other parties. Jordan is getting a lot of pressure from its own people about its um, relations, diplomatic relations with Israel. They're, they're having a lot of protesters on the street. Um, all it's going to take is for some of these powers, perhaps the BRICS powers, to say, you know what, man? I don't, they, I don't think the United States could really take us on at this point. They, they can't I'm even... honestly surprised it hasn't happened yet, right? I mean, this so is far from the first provocation beyond Gaza and the West Bank, even since October 7th. Didn't they kill a Lebanese journalist back at the end of October? Right? Yes. I mean, you know, they, they've been up to this shit this whole time. I'm surprised it hasn't broken out sooner. I'm surprised it hasn't broken out by now. Well, I, I think that analysis is right. They are trying, just like Ukraine was trying not lately i think they've given up on it uh just like ukraine was trying to get us into world war three now israel's right. trying to get us into world war three um right. i think that we really are don't have the balls unless we have to and there's no you can't assume that past a certain point as russia did with ukraine they're not just going to say fuck it 
Let, let's go. Let's go. Let's settle this. Enough is enough. And uh, yeah, and that makes it more World surprising. I mean, we would lose World War III. We wouldn't win World War III. Well, and that's why I'm saying, why wouldn't they? Because Putin, whatever your thoughts are about Putin, he's a smart guy. And he's got a good strategic mind. And if I'm sitting where Putin is sitting, I'm seeing a hollowed out, decadent country um, living on a financialized economy that's not really based on anything other than air that will tip over if you hit it with a really strong breeze at this point. That's what I'm thinking if I'm Putin. Maybe he talks well, to Well, and also, and says, I mean, not hey. to sound like Marianne Williamson here, but I, I don't think this country has enough spiritual gas in its proverbial tank to actually <laughs> go to war on that scale. I just don't see it happening. I, I can't see the military mobilizing for this government. I, I just, I don't see it. Well, how do you mean? You think they'll mutiny? I just don't think they'll be able to field the team. Yeah. I, I don't think they'll have signups. They would need a they would need a draft at some point. If you're talking about the the, the scale of combat that would be sure. needed to actually fight a world war, you would need a draft. You would need a draft. You're not going to get the recruits. Nobody's volunteering to go fucking fight Joe Biden, Joe Biden's war against Russia and Syria. They would need a draft. And at that point, you don't know what'll happen. At that well, point, are they, are all they, bets are kind of off. We we've talked about this a little, and you focus a lot on the on the uh, breakdown and a belief in the institutions, which I agree with. But I mean, what, what is it? Two thirds of people under 18 are obese at this point. Like, where are you getting these soldiers from? It's a, it's an out of shape, decadent society, man. If, if you're, if you're talking about non-nuclear war and China and Russia and Iran team up, they eat our lunch all day and all night, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think, I mean, those two things are not as, disconnected as you might think i think part of the reason you know it's a fat and decadent society is because it's a society that lacks any real purpose any real sense of meaning right i mean that's when people let themselves go they let themselves go once they've already had the kids they want to have they got the wife they want and that's it you know you're 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 just living out the the end and that's what this country's been doing for a few decades i think um and we are certainly in no shape now I mean, this country is going to beat the Russians, please, please. And that that might be why we haven't done it. It might be because we know we can't win it. And we know that a conflict on that scale would probably usher in the kind of multipolar world that we're no doubt walking towards. But that right. would just accelerate right. it. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think it would take a lot to collapse the United States at this point. Hey, there's still tickets available in Stockholm, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Edmonton, Alberta, Vancouver, British Columbia, Denver, Ashland, Virginia, and Athens, Georgia. See you there. Mm -hmm.